हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज़ डॉक्टर श्रद्धा एंड टुडे वी विल बी रीडिंग अबाउट ब्रेस्ट कैंसर डायग्नोसिस वेन वी टॉक अबाउट ब्रेस्ट कैंसर डायग्नोसिस मेथड्स रिमेंबर बेस्ट फॉर द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ब्रेस्ट कैंसर इज द ट्रिपल असेसमेंट मैथड वॉट इज दिस ट्रिपल असेसमेंट मैथड वी यूज थ्री मैथड्स ऑफ असेसमेंट ऑफ ब्रेस्ट मास वन इज क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन और क्लिनिकल डायग्नोसिस इन विच सर्जन विल एग्जामिन द ब्रेस्ट मास फॉर इट्स benign nature or malignant nature and you must have read about it in your clinical posting second is the radiological examination in which they do mammography ultrasound or mri depending on the present profile and divide the mass into benign into malignant third is the pathological diagnosis or pathological examination in which we do fnse or biopsy to know the nature of the breast mass among all of them Overall the gold standard method or the best method for the diagnosis of breast cancer is yes it's a pathological examination breast biopsy Remember friends when i talk about breast biopsy you must be very particular you have to look what is given in your option okay so breast biopsy can be fnse which is fine needle aspiration biopsy it's a cytological examination we extract the cell out of the mass second is true cut biopsy we get the true cut of the lesion and core biopsy or excisional biopsy so these are the three types of breast biopsy fine needle aspiration biopsy is usually first pathological examination done for a breast lump or breast mass so always if they are asking about first you have to tick fnse as investigation of choice but if they are asking which is the best method or gold standard method for breast mass examination in pathology then remember it's true cut biopsy or the excisional biopsy among these two for the investigation purpose true cut biopsy is better than excisional biopsy but for the therapeutic purpose excisional biopsy can be a better option okay so first investigation fnse best investigation is true cut biopsy let's see in detail about the fine needle aspiration cytology also known as fine needle aspiration biopsy we have seen this is the first investigation done in the case of breast lump or breast mass depending on its psychological feature we can divide the breast mass into benign disease or malignant disease for the benign disease concentrate on the cell morphology what you will see is the tightly arranged ductal epithelial cell or cohesive ductal epithelial cells so tightly arranged ductal epithelial cells and surrounded by few dot dots known as bear nuclei this is the feature of benign breast disease multiple times asked in the aims examination so i'm drawing the tightly arranged cells these are tightly arranged cells and they have resemblance with the ductal epithelial cell so we will we are supposing these are tightly arranged ductal epithelial cells and in the background these dot dots are bear nuclei so two things ductal epithelial cell clump plus bear nuclei is equal to benign breast disease how to identify that disease is malignant first feature in the case of ductal carcinoma what you will see is just opposite of benign breast disease instead of tightly arranged ductal epithelial cell you will see this cohesive ductal epithelial cell so these ductal epithelial cells they will be showing malignant feature and they will be scattered here and there in the slide second lobular carcinoma in case of lobular carcinoma they will be forming a proper lined so singly arranged ductal epithelial cells is equal to lobular carcinoma let's understand fnc During via this video needle aspiration biopsy your doctor will insert a needle into your breast 
some form of guidance, such as an ultrasound probe, will be used to guide the needle to the correct area. Then, fluid or a small sample of tissue this will be removed. This image is showing fibroadenoma, which is most common benign tumor of the breast. Friends, can you appreciate this tightly arranged cluster of epithelial cells? Or at least you can say, yes, these cells are very tightly arranged. There is no space in between. Okay, this is the first feature of the benign breast disease. And second, do not forget to appreciate this small, small bare nuclei. So two features in combination is suggestive of benign breast disease. And most common benign tumor of the breast is fibroadenoma few important high yield points about the fibroadenoma first it's a most common benign tumor of breast must know point second the most common presentation of this disease is mobile breast lump it is usually disease of the young female and they come with a mobile breast lump it is so mobile that it has been known as breast mouse if you will perform mammography, what you will see is popcorn calcification. Popcorn calcification is usually the coarse calcification. Do you remember that this popcorn calcification or the coarse calcification, if present in the lung, it's a feature of lung hamartoma and lung hamartoma is also the benign tumor and in fact it is also the most common benign tumor of the lung. So popcorn calcification, fibroadenoma and lung hematoma in fnse we have seen that we see cohesive ductal epithelial cell and bare nuclei excisional biopsy is usually done as a treatment and also for the diagnosis and what you see here is a well defined capsulated lesion and under high power what we will appreciate is two features so i'm drawing a slide here high power view of fibroadenoma and these are lines you will appreciate few lines and actually they are compressed ducts so these lines are compressed ducts and in between light pink color tissue will be shown and that will be stroma lines compressed ducts and this is a stroma which is the actual tumor tissue remember fibroadenoma is the tumor of stroma it's a stromal tumor which is benign in nature Let's see how do we perform core needle biopsy or the true cut biopsy. A core needle biopsy is done to remove several small pieces of tissue or cores of tissue from the breast. It may be guided using one of several techniques. During a stereotactic core needle biopsy, you will lie face down on a table with your breast inserted through a hole in the table. Your doctor will inject a local anesthetic to numb the area. Then, using a digital mammogram as a guide, your doctor will insert a hollow needle into the area of concern. Several small cylinders of tissue will be removed for examination. During an ultrasound-guided core needle biopsy, your doctor will use an ultrasound probe to locate the area of concern. A hollow needle will be inserted to remove several cores of tissue. Fine needle aspiration and core needle biopsies involve removing small samples of fluid or tissue using a needle. However, if an area of concern detected by mammogram or ultrasound is not accessible by a core needle biopsy, or if your physician wants to remove the entire area, a surgical biopsy may be recommended. A surgical biopsy is done in an operating room using two techniques, excisional biopsy 
and incisional biopsy. During an excisional biopsy, your surgeon will make an incision in the breast and remove the entire mass. At the end of the procedure, the incision will be closed. Your surgeon will perform an incisional biopsy if only a small part of the area of concern needs to be removed, usually to make a diagnosis. At the end of the procedure, the incision will be closed. If the abnormality cannot be felt, needle localization will be used to mark the location of the area of concern. During this procedure, your radiologist will insert a hook wire into the breast through a needle under mammogram or ultrasound guidance in order to mark the area. The needle will be removed, but the wire will stay in place. You will then go to the operating room, where your surgeon will make an incision in the breast. He or she will follow the wire to locate the targeted area, then remove it. An X-ray will be taken of your breast to make sure the targeted area has been removed. Then, your surgeon will close the incision. True cut biopsy interpretation or the core needle biopsy interpretation is again very important for your examination. First interpretation, if you see any leaf-like area or the leafy architecture in the slide and some fragments of leaf here and there, most probably you are dealing with the phyloids tumor also known as cystosarcoma phyloids so this is the leaf like architecture I have drawn which is equal to phyloid tumor In between this leaf, what we have is the stroma and stroma is the main tumor component here. Remember friends, the high yield point about the pyloid tumor are, it's a stromal tumor usually seen in the old age, 5th decade, 6th decade of the life, patient present with a large lump. Biopsy is done for the investigation and excision biopsy per se is also therapeutic in nature in biopsy you will see a leaf like architecture we'll see the real slide in the next few minutes and treatment of choice is going to be wide excision with the margins what about the nature of the disease is this disease is benign or malignant it's a tricky question, you always get confused. Remember, phyloid's tumor can be benign, borderline or malignant. And if it is malignant, you call it cystosarcoma phyloids. In case of benign, you usually go for excision. But in the case of malignancy, you do mastectomy. Friends, can you appreciate this leafy architecture? Yes, you are thinking in a right direction. It's a phyloid tumor and these are fragments of the leaf here and there. Next image, a very very important one, Comedo carcinoma. You must have seen this as your options in MCQs many a times. This is a carcinoma in situ. If you look properly into the image, you will find a pattern and this pattern is this dark pink area is central necrotic area. So all these are necrotic areas and every necrotic area is surrounded by this light blue zone which is a sheet of tumor cells. So central necrosis surrounded by tumor cell is a comedo and that's why it is known as comedo carcinoma it is a type of ductal carcinoma in situ which most likely to be presented with palpable mass friends dci dcis doesn't usually present with the palpable mass 
but the only DCIS which present with the palpable mass is cometocarcinoma. Remember, it's a carcinoma in situ. Third one, lobular carcinoma. Can you appreciate this pattern here? Yes, it's a single file pattern or Indian file pattern. Again, multiple times ask in your examination. Malignant cells, they are forming a queue, they are forming a line, they are following each other. Just like red Indians f used to follow each other when they used to shift to a place. And that's why it is known as Indian file pattern or single file pattern. Lobular carcinoma can present with bilateral breast mass. They can present with multicentric breast lesion. So bilaterality and multicentricity is the future of lobular breast cancer. Remember, lobules are not seen in male breast and that's why lobular cancer is not found in male patients. Thank you all for the watching. You can go through the complete playlist regarding breast cancer.